there's a fair amount of Fibonacci in her body. A person who explored this is the famous Renaissance painter Leonardo da Vinci. You know about his art, but did you know that Leonardo was quite a mathematician also? Let's look at one of his famous pieces of work, The Vitruvian Man, which is Leonardo's study of the proportions of man. You must have seen it somewhere, but have you ever wondered what all those lines are about? Well, these lines connect with the golden rectangles. In fact, there are three distinct sets, one for the head area, one for the torso, and one for the legs. Let's start with the head. If we draw a rectangle whose base goes along the man's neck from shoulder to shoulder, the top of the rectangle should meet the top of the man's head. This creates the first golden rectangle. Inscribe a square in the left side of the rectangle, creating a smaller golden rectangle on the right side of the man's head. Then do the same with the right side of the original rectangle, creating a long thin rectangle that runs vertically through the center of the man's head. Did you note that the rectangles intersect with the focal points of the head, the eyes? Now for the second set of rectangles. There's a rectangle which runs from elbow to elbow and from neck to waist. This creates a golden rectangle. For the third set, draw a rectangle whose lower two vertices are at the places where the man's outermost toes touch the outlying circle. The rectangle should extend vertically to the man's waist. This creates yet another golden rectangle. The proportions of the Vitruvian man are believed to be ideal proportions for the human figure. Let's move to the Mona Lisa, arguably the most famous painting in the world. Considered to be Leonardo's magnum opus, it depicts a woman whose gaze meets the viewers with an expression often described as enigmatic. Now this painting also seems to be inundated with golden rectangles. It looks like Leonardo has almost purposefully tried to incorporate mathematics into his art.